Hey guys, Nick here. So today I'm looking at the Zero Belt from Tinacore. Uh, historically, with all of their concealment holsters, Tinacore has always focused on minimalism and purpose-driven equipment. Stepping into the belt market, Tinacore applies those same principles to their Zero Belt. They really address the issue of the bulky buckle in the front head on with their zero belt and they have come up with a really good option to prevent an awkward off to the side mounting of the buckle or an awkward bulge where the buckle bursts out and prints under your shirts while you carry appendix. Throughout this introduction I've been showing you various holster setups with the zero belt ranging from gun holster separate from the mag carrier all the way up to different sidecar style holsters and as you can see the zero belt pretty much fits the same there's no awkward bulge from a buckle that's unnecessary or it's going to make it an awkward print for your carry setup i personally like many of you probably as well have noticed that when you wear a holster setup especially a sidecar style holster the buckle really protrudes out a lot Wearing a gun holster and a magazine holster separate from each other mitigates that bulge a little bit, but it's really still there in some fashion. Another issue that the Zero Belt addresses very well is the thickness of the belt. Uh, what I've found personally in a lot of belts that have Velcro that sandwiches the tail for a closure, that the clips have a very hard time going over such thick material and securing properly. And sometimes avoiding that thick material, you have to do the awkward side buckle. Now, of course, not everybody loves the tactical style belts. Some people just love an old fashioned belt buckle. While others may love this, in my opinion, I don't think that it works well with a Bendix carry at all. It creates a very strange and awkward bulge that prints very hard, and it's kind of difficult to work with and just uncomfortable. And this buckle still doesn't work well with sidecar style holsters, even if they hinge in the middle. The extra holster material will push the buckle and the belt material out even further. Okay, so this next piece is probably going to trigger a few people in the EDC community and I'm going to talk about core essentials belts and concealed carry. Don't get me wrong, I love core belts. I think they're innovative and they work great for what they do. The ratcheting system is adjustable on the fly and they're really a great belt in different styles, different style buckles, and they're really cool. No hate on core essentials at all. But here's where I found a lot of the issues that stem to conceal carry with it. That cool buckle that has the awesome ratcheting system really prints a lot. Also, depending on what buckle you get, the width of that buckle may interfere with your concealment setup. This is going to cause you to have to do the offset to the side buckle arrangement that is gonna kinda negate why you got a really cool belt with a really sick buckle to begin with. Now, if you're a really tactical guy, you've got belts with Cobra buckles, which are hard as hell to put through your belt loops, change my mind. And most of those buckles require a Velcro tail that has to be secured down, making your belt even thicker. So on that note of addressing thickness, here's a direct comparison of how thick the Zero belt is as compared to a Core belt. Now, the Core belt does have a layer of some rigid material up under the nylon that does add that rigidity and thickness However, the thinness of the Zero Belt really shows in this comparison. Now here's a side-by-side -side of the Zero Belt next to a Bigfoot Gun Belts EDC belt. Uh, Bigfoot Gun Belts, they make their belts with a strip of metal in the middle of them sandwiched between the two pieces of nylon that increase rigidity. However, this arrangement does make the belt thicker as you can see compared to the core. Here's another Bigfoot gun belt, the leather belt, and of course leather pieces are just thicker and they sandwich in another strip of metal for rigidity, uh, but the thickness is no comparison to the Zero Belt. Now here's where the thickness of the belts come into play. This is the Zero Belt, and those are the DCC clips that are on all Tenacore holsters. As you can see, they snap and secure closed securely over the belt as it's doubled over on itself. That's not a characteristic that you're going to find on any of the belts that I've shown here. 
they're doubled over on themselves, whether it's either to Velcro close down the tail or simply to just have the belt in your belt loops that goes over itself where you put your gun. Now in this instance, the holster is essentially secured. However, the tongues that stick out from the ends of the clips are going to provide snag points that will catch your garments in the event you have to present. Same situation with this belt. With the Velcro closure, it just makes the belt entirely too thick. The DCC clips don't even secure closed all the way. Putting the Zero belt on is a little unconventional as compared to other belts that you may have worn before. The tail of the Zero belt actually goes through the buckle and behind the rest of the belt, tucking under the belt and into the belt loops. There's no need for any Velcro or clips on the Zero belt as the design of the buckle prevents any slippage. Now, you might be asking the question, Nick, what about the rigidity of the Zero belt? Well, while it's not as stiff and rigid as some other EDC belts that you might find on the market, it's plenty rigid enough to carry your EDC loadout and pretty much anything else you want to attach to it. It's rigid enough to withstand draws during dry fire practice. It holds up this kit that I wear usually daily without any issues and there's no sagging or falling at all to be found with the belt. So I couldn't completely understand how Tenacor got this simple buckle to hold this belt close so well, so I asked them directly. They just told me, magic. Magic holds the belt closed. Of course, I'm kidding. However, with the belt's simple design and how well it holds, it certainly seems like magic. To test the belt and buckle out, I decided to put it through a few weighted tests with some kettlebells. The first test, I used a 40 pound kettlebell and hung the belt over my pull-up bar and put the tail of the belt into the buckle. I was only able to get a small piece of the tail into the buckle, however, it held with no issues at all with the 40 pound kettlebell. For the second weighted test, I used a 60 pound kettlebell and for transparency's sake and time management, I edited out my struggling self putting it on the kettlebell. But as you can see, I got a small piece of the tail of the belt through the buckle and it's holding like a champion. Even if you add a little swing to it and I add a little fatness to it by pulling down on the belt, no problem. Handles it just fine. For the third test, I wanted to really see what it could do and I hooked up two 60 pound kettlebells, a total of 120 for those of you who struggle with math like me and I wanted to see if it would hold it up. As you can see, it holds it just fine. The buckle doesn't slip at all. The belt holds true. So overall, the Zero Belt is a quality belt that Tenacore holsters tested themselves for a few years before they even brought it to market. I think that it's gonna be a great addition to your EDC loadout. If you're looking for a little more slim down, minimalist look, it's really a great belt that fits that profile and it checks a whole lot of boxes for me personally. So if you're interested in the Zero Belt, check it out at Tenacore Holsters.